In this video, we present our work, Open World Object Manipulation, using pre-trained vision language models from the Robotics at Google team. We begin with our motivation of creating a robot learning method that can enable a robot to do many manipulation tasks involving many objects. Recently, a promising approach towards this goal is Robotics Transformer 1, a multitask imitation learning method that demonstrates impressive control performance on a variety of manipulation skills in an office kitchen setting. One of the most important aspects of RT1 was large-scale data collection of over 130,000 demonstrations collected over 17 months and 13 robots. While this enabled strong performance on over 700 different tasks, this large expensive data set focused on just 17 objects. This limited RT1 from generalizing zero shot to any novel object. Can we expand the performance of RT1 to many new objects without collecting an additional hundreds of thousands of demonstrations? One potential solution is to leverage recent advances in vision language models that are able to perform zero shot open vocabulary image detection given a language description. Here, we show compelling real examples of one such model, OWLVIT. From the building blocks of RT1 and OWLVIT, we present our method MU, manipulation of open world objects. First, given a text command, we identify the main objects of interest in the instruction. Then, we use the initial image of the robot scene and query a pre-trained OWLVIT model to generate relevant bounding boxes of those objects. From these raw bounding boxes, we create an extremely simple object-centric representation of a single pixel at the center of each detected bounding box. This simple mask representation is provided to the policy along with the current and recent history of images. Then, these images in simple mask are encoded via an efficient net image tokenizer, which contains interleaved film layers conditioned by a textual instruction encoding. Then, the rest of the policy follows the vanilla RT1 architecture. Importantly, we note that the OWLVIT simple mask generation occurs only once per episode at the beginning and is not updated during the episode. This single pixel mask provides a coarse localization that helps the policy attend to the correct parts of the visual space, but it still needs to be interpreted by the policy in relation to the encoded textual instruction and current frame in recent history. In addition to the algorithmic contributions of Mu, we also study how an object-centric dataset can enable generalization. While the RT1 dataset contained over 130,000 demonstrations of many manipulation skills for 17 objects, we collect less than 10,000 picking demonstrations, but increase object diversity to over 100 different objects. We compare the object generalization performance of Mu against RT1 and Vima by evaluating on 13 seen objects and 8 unseen objects for a variety of manipulation skills. We find that Mu is able to perform well on objects seen in the training dataset, but also generalizes to novel held out objects. In addition, we find that this generalization performance of Mu increases with model capacity. Going beyond objects, we also test Mu's robustness to visual challenges such as novel backgrounds, distractors, environments, additional objects, and combinations of these factors of variation. Some of these evaluation scenarios are particularly difficult, where objects of interest almost camouflage into pattern tablecloths. Even in these challenging situations, we find that Moo can robustly accomplish many manipulation tasks. After validating that Moo generalizes to masks resulting from an initial textual input to OWLVIT, we also explore whether Moo can be conditioned from a variety of other initial input modalities besides for a language text instruction. For instance, we show that the text instruction can be produced by a generative captioning VLM such as Polly, which can interpret a human's intent by identifying which object a person is pointing to, which can then be fed into LVIT for mask generation. Alternatively, LVIT need not be conditioned on a textual query. It can also be prompted with an image query, such as a stock image downloaded from the internet.
Querying LVIT with a target image is relevant when objects are hard to describe in words, such as when there are many visually similar objects in a scene. In this example, four very similar green beverage cans are difficult to disambiguate, even with significant prompt engineering. However, by providing a target image of the desired can, LVIT is able to generate better detections that can be used for single pixel masks that are then passed to Moo. Finally, in cases where LVIT or other VLMs fail to produce an accurate detection, we experiment with a graphical user interface where humans can directly input the ground truth mask provided to the policy. This is especially useful in cases with clutter or duplicate objects, where textual or visual queries may be quite difficult even for state-of-the-art VLMs. By changing the user-facing upstream input modality, we aim to show that the single pixel mask representation used in Moo is quite universal and does not make assumptions about how the mask was generated. Coincidentally, there is an open vocabulary object navigation algorithm called Clip on Wheels, or CAL for short. To showcase a combined open vocabulary navigation and manipulation system, we implement a variant of CAL and combine it with Moo, which we present as CAL Moo. Cal handles robot navigation to an object of interest, upon which Moo can then manipulate it. In this video, we introduced Manipulation of Open World Objects, a method that combines the generalization capabilities of object-centric VLMs like LVIT with the robustness of multitask robotic manipulation policies like RT1. We believe that Moo is a promising step towards a general robotic system that can do many tasks with many objects. We invite you to check out our website and paper for further details.